This video is sponsored by Decal Works, offering 10% off all graphics to retail customers. Use the promo code RX10 at decalmx.com to receive 10% off your graphics. Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome to racerxonline.com. I am Chris Kiever. To the right of me is Jay Clark. And before we continue with this video, let's just get this out of the way. That's my best two-stroke impression. I'll let you guys do yours. Waiting. Very good job. Awesome. So now we got that out of the way. Suzuki. Remember those guys? They're still around. But this is a little throwback. 2003 Suzuki RM125. Usually we do the fun bike section in the publication. Yes, there is still a magazine available, 12 issues, $30. You can go subscribe. It's very cool. But I thought, why not do a fun bikes video and then talk about what it's like to ride a little piece, a little piece of nostalgia. So, Jay, as most of these garage builds that we do, this isn't a garage build, but it's a fun bikes. There is backstories to this thing. So, Jay is here to tell me, Michael Fisher, this is his bike. Give us a backstory on what is going on here and Michael. Well, Michael's... In Nebraska. I think he wishes he was... In at Glen Helen? Yeah, at Glen Helen. Even if it's 120 degrees. Even if it's 120 degrees. He's 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 stuck in Nebraska. and But he, he likes it, don't get me wrong. But uh, being a moto guy, he's built a bunch of bikes. And I've helped him with a few of these bu uh, builds. And he, he loves the whole moto scene and loves building these bikes. And most of the bikes he builds are bikes that they have just had over the years. They don't get rid of any bikes. This was a bike that his uh, sister raced growing up and it sat for years and years. And then he finally goes, hey, we need to bring that thing back to uh, to its glory. So he has a bunch of these bikes laying around the house. He's, he, we, we did a couple with Racer X a few years ago, KX125 and KX250. Came out great. Those were like three or four years ago. And uh, now did some Suzukis. And this thing is uh, really cool looking, as you can see. And uh, he just loves fixing these things up. So, usually, I'm I'm very transparent guy. I'm not a huge two-stroke fan, Jay. Right, no, I, okay. I, we know that. Okay. So, but I did own one of these bikes. So, when Jay told me about this bike, it was like, uh, he's pulling my heartstrings. So, I'm getting back on the old 2003 RM125, uh, a little bit more uh, LBs these days, 172-ish right now. Um, but I warn, we're... I warn you, this one is stock bore. So not a big bore. No, no. Stock bore. If I would have known that, we would have had a different type of video. <laughs> it's a stock bore. So I don't want you to go too back into your days, your history, you know, and you're, and you're right. So don't be looking forward to a big bore. We at least need a 144, Jay. <laughs> so the, the advantage of these 125s is that they're, we know in, today they're not going to beat any 250Fs out on the track. It's just fun to build them. And keeping a 125 is just fun and reliable. That's one of the reasons I kind of push for that. So I'm going to get my big behind on this seat. I'm going to go up the hills of Glen Helen Raceway today, and then we'll be back to talk about what is done to this machine, a little bit of history, and what I think of it. Look, I'll be straight up with you guys. I've been on a 450 lately. I'll get used to this thing. It's 125 cc's of fury, but we'll come back and talk about it here shortly. All right, a little throwback here, TBT time, 03 Suzuki RM125. I'm going to talk to Jay Clark. He's the one that built this sucker. I'm going to bring my kid in here in a minute, too, because I want him to talk to you guys to let you know what it's like to ride because I purchased one of these things, so I put him on this bike today and go, hey, why don't you ride something that I purchased myself back in the day? And uh, The face he made at me was pretty shocking when he came back. So, Jay, give us an overview of the bike and why it's built. We kind of covered that a little bit in the intro, but... 
let's just cover this whole thing right here. Well, our good buddy Michael Fisher back in Nebraska loves to build these things, and and this was nostalgic. This was the bike his sister raced growing up, and they got it back in 03, and they've had it the whole time. And he, you know, with these builds, it's more about the nostalgia factor, you know, the whole, you know, kind of catch to it, right? That there's a backstory, and and they like, and it looks cool. We're going to build this thing to look cool. We're not going to build a bike that's going to beat a 250F, right? So it, it's still kind of fun to build these things and to use good parts on it, make it safe and re reliable, but yet, you know, you, you can go crazy and put a full race engine in there, but it's still not going to beat a current YZ125 or KTM 125. So what parts did you use on this thing? Obviously, there's a lot of bits and pieces here, so rip this thing down. Well, the main the main area is the engine, of course. And so there we use all the Pro-X has all the parts for the engine. Rebuilt the crank, uh, Wysco piston. Uh, change all that stuff, V-Force recage, spec bolt has the bolts for the engine. So all that stuff's really nice and solid, like to have good components in there. Uh, Wysco has a clutch basket and Pro-X has the clutch pieces as well, so we're able to finish that off. So that's really nice. And then Pro-X has a lot of the brake rebuild parts as well. So you can kind of freshen those brakes up and make them feel a little bit more like a current bike. Still not going to be great there, but but a lot better, you know. And then Galfer has lines, so that helps a lot. Pro-X chain and sprockets. Uh, we got, and we were able to fit some... Yamaha foot pegs on here from Raptor to make them fit. We got those on there so we can get some good wide footprint uh, pegs. It's hard to find pegs for this 03. Not a lot of bikes for the Suzuki's like there was, uh, like there is on some of the other bikes out there. If, you if you're fixing up a Yamaha, there's a lot more parts available than on some of these, you know, Suzuki's that changed a lot in a few years. So that, that can be a bit of a challenge. Is there still OEM parts available? Can you find those? <laughs> some parts, you know, but some of the critical stuff like an air box boot or things like that, mo any, a lot of electronics, coils, stators, that, uh, uh, that stuff's all discontinued. And so you're on eBay searching around, and a lot of times if it's used, you risk the same chance of it being bad. So that's, on some of these bikes, it, that can be a real struggle on finding some of those kind of parts. It's, and it's, it's a shame because the bike's only 20 years old. You go, you know, 20 years old, you know, and it's still, as you can see, it looks amazing, but if you were to lose a stator or a coil, you're gonna have a tough time finding the right parts. So for me, guys, look, I purchased one of these suckers back in the day because every day I'd be out riding the desert and I wanted something to hammer for, you know, to train on, and I purchased this, and I was a big Suzuki guy in the 90s, and I kind of went away from that in the early 2000s and then got this bike, and man, it was, I had a blast on this bike at the time. Then I just went, went back on it today and I was like, I can't believe how slow these things are. So in my mind, I'm thinking, wow, it is very, very slow compared to what we normally ride. But uh, the fun factor level for me is still pretty good. I like that. I just can't believe how much we've evolved in 20 years. That's that's for sure. And, and I did, I had my kid because I didn't have a current 125. So my kid, when he was 13, 14, he rode an RM125. Now we did get it hopped up a little bit for him so he could stay because I had a deal with my kid it was that he had to pass me on a 125 or even a 150 before he could ride a 250F. Uh, I wanted him to, to struggle. And my 250F got a few dents in the swing arm. Uh, I have a, like, it was like 15 or 16, got dents in the swing arm because he tried to pass, but he couldn't, he couldn't make it stick for, it, it took a while. But I made him ride a 125 for a while and the Suzuki was a good, he liked that bike because they turned so well. And that part of them is, you know, kind of fun and good for a guy to learn on. So still a good bike for a kid to learn on if you can find a good deal on them. That's another problem nowadays. The bikes are going for way too much used. So that, that can really hold you up from fixing one of these up. If you don't have one, if you're going to go try to find one, you're going to spend two grand a lot of times on just a core that needs a ton of work. And you're like, oh, I'm going to spend five, four or five grand on a bike I spent two grand on. Why don't I just buy a brand new Yamaha or something else? Yeah, so obviously, look, it, you can watch the videos. It's not terribly fast going up the hills you probably could see a street sweeper pass me up the hills but uh i like where jay's head's at it's kind of like when your kid first gets his driver's license you're not going to buy him or her a new vehicle you want to get him or her something a little bit beat up used safe this is the suzuki for me like i feel like before you graduate into a four stroke and really just give it the beans on a four stroke a lot of things can happen on a 250f it's those things are fast so Get him or her on a 125 specifically, you know, RM, as Jay said, they cornered really well. The motors are fairly reliable. I didn't see, like, when I went out on the track how wide those foot pegs were, and I'm like, hmm, I don't remember those things being that wide back then. So uh, uh, for me, it's, it brings me back a little bit to my youth. I was in my, you know, mid-20s when I, when I rode these things. So. In your prime? Your... Oh, my prime was in my 30s. Okay. All right. We don't peak as men until to our 30s. Okay. So I uh, had a great time on on this bike. Uh, Jay is going to continue. How many bikes do you build a year? 
So in the neighborhood of 18 to 24 range, depends on, and I work with some guys like this too, with, with Michael and, and to where we'll, you know, finish them up and do a lot of the other stuff and I help coordinate a lot of them. But the ones I build, you know, anywhere from 15 to 20, so pro probably. One thing real quick, where do people, where should people go to find used bike? What's a good place to find used bikes that are decent deals? So honestly, lately, I've had better luck with uh, Facebook Marketplace because that's a little bit more, there's less scammers. Um, you got to be careful on Craigslist and uh, you know and all that. And on Facebook Marketplace in your area, you can look your area. So we seem to we're, we're seeming to find some better since COVID. You know, it's been tough to find those kind of deals. And so we, we've we had a little better luck there. That might be a place because there also seems to be a little less people searching on there, so you can kind of find better deals on there. All right, thanks, Jay Suzuki RM125 2003 edition. All right, I brought the YouTube generation in TikTok, YouTube, Fortnite, gamers. Look it, I'm old, so I guess it sounds like I'm old grumpy guy, but like I said, I bought one of these bikes. He has never experienced a real old 125, so I brought my kid in. Aiden, what's it like to ride a 2003 Suzuki RM125? Give the people out there that do not understand your generation what it's like to ride older technology. Don't hate on it too much. Just give us some feedback. Well, obviously, ride bikes compared today compared to... 20 years ago it's it's way different now i can see how many uh how guys get hurt a little bit easier today than back in the past like this thing is so slow it's so slow i, I almost said ancient but it's not that old but I, i'm trying to ride this thing and i can barely even get over some of the small tabletops that are going on it's funny how much you have to downshift in corners downshift but then it's it almost like makes it worse honestly because like you get you get to the meat of the power, but there's no meat of the power. The meat of the power is very narrow, people. Yeah. So you got a little window to ride in, and this is what made it interesting to race back in the day. This is why you hear us old geezers saying racing was better back in the day because look how hard it was. It's very hard. I don't I don't know even know how guys rode supercross on these things. Your dad did. And guess what? I had to shift to third gear or before the triple. You don't even understand that. You didn't even know what a video was the other day. I still don't think, I think that's impossible still that you still hit it in third gear. It'd probably bog off the lip. So back in the day in 2003, 2002, you had to shift out of the corner from second to third right before the face of the jump. And this is why you saw a lot of endos because there was a lot of false neutrals. And uh, if you didn't shift into third, you would case it. And some guys would miss a shift and still try to go for it. And goodbye wrists. They would just break their wrists right on impact. So, uh... Do you respect the older generation a little bit more now? As you watch older Supercrosses, and a you younger generation, if you haven't watched older Supercrosses, early 2000s, you should on YouTube because there's a lot of cool stuff. I do respect a little bit more now knowing that how slow these bikes were. And nowadays, like, super, you see Supercross guys hit a jump. Their bikes were so fast where the only thing that really stops them is mental. And on these things back in back in the day, it, it took some balls probably to, to hit some things on and technique, so uh, a little bit different. Uh, another thing I want to talk to you about, I brought you up on a 125 before you got on a 250F. Uh, give the younger generation why it's better to get on a two-stroke before you hop on a 250F. Uh, well, multiple reasons. I think the main reason is uh, just getting used to a big bike and getting to use how it feels. And then, obviously, safety factor. I mean, yeah, safety factor, but mainly for me it was just getting used to how the big bike felt. Without all the power. <laughs> exactly. Which means stay on the bike. It does no good when you're on the couch broken up. So fun build for me. Good to take me back a little bit in my heritage. It's fun to have my son uh, ride something that I purchased way back in the day before he was even conceived. So fun build for me. So thanks to Jay Clark. And, of course, thanks for Suzuki, man, for making these things back in the day. It was awesome. So 2003 Suzuki RM125. You guys want to see more fun videos, stay here or... You can just go to RacerX's YouTube. We have a bunch of stuff over there if you haven't checked that out. And, of course, you younger generation, we still read every now and again. You read magazines? We have it at home. Uh, I read a couple here and there. Not very often, though. 12 issues, $30. Get yourself a free gift when you subscribe to RacerX Illustrated, the publication. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you on the next go-round.